Hi everybody! Today we'll be going through part two of my top up to my colouring book collection. Just looking through the books that I've bought this year and the end of last year and showing you any whips or any finished pages I might have in any of them. And today we're starting with this one. This is The Women of Tua by Lisa Johanna if I remember rightly or Johanna. I'm not exactly sure how to say that but yeah this is this one. I saw this on somebody else's channel. I can't for the life of me remember who. But she had the artist edition, I think, on the much better paper with the spiral binding. But this one was on Amazon. This is on Amazon paper. Is it made in Britain? It is made in Britain, but this paper is all right. So Amazon, Amazon paper is so hit and miss. Sometimes you get good paper, sometimes you don't. But these were all kind of portraits of ladies. I think it's... I think there's a book series that she's actually written. I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but yeah, she's written a book series and these are all kind of characters from the books. And I have coloured one, which is a colour along on the channel, which is that one there. Um, with RTs of Castle Arts pencils and this is Super Tip here, which actually managed to smudge over onto the, the stones and the leaves there, but we covered that up and no big deal. So yeah, that one was back in March. There we go, some super nice portraits in there. It doesn't say, it doesn't mention the book series. But yeah, that is The Women of Tua by Lisa Johanna. Next we have a Selena Fennec, again on Amazon paper. This paper is alright as well, this Great Britain. Oh, it's so hit and miss. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But this one um, is more of a kind of dark, kind of gothic -y pictures. And uh, let me find the picture I actually bought it for, which I still haven't coloured. This one. I absolutely love this picture. That one there. And I'm just flipping through. I saw another one that I want to colour like. <laughs> so it uh, makes me sound really sad. I want to colour her like she -Ra. Any of you uh, out there, you remember she -Ra cartoon series on the TV? I want to colour her like she -Ra. And that will look awesome. But yeah, some really lovely pictures in this one. You get two sets. There's 25 pictures and like two of each. And this one is one that I've actually started there. That one I completely forgot about when I did my whips video. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is another whip that I want to colour in. This is mainly Deco Time pencils, I think they're called, from B&M here in the UK. Which seem to work quite well. If you get a decent Amazon paper, you can work with it. And the harder pencils I tend to find work better. Um, although the Arteza work better in that Women of Tua book. Again, hit and miss, yeah. <laughs> you take your chances. But yeah, she's coming along really well. I um, think I'm still sticking with my plan of making him a white lion, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see when I do get back to colouring that one. And that's got to be Black Cat for my little Black Cat. <laughs> so yeah, Selena Fennec. These next two are Doctor Who colouring books that I bought off of eBay as a job lot. Um, they were second hands, so or some of them were already started in these ones. I got these ones from eBay when I was doing my sci-fi month, which was February, I think, for my son's birthday month. Um, I've just stuck some paper over the owner's name there, because there was a name written in them. Um, the artists are there, I think. Um, James Newman. James Newman Gray. Lee Tang Chu and Jan Smith are the artists that drew in this book and it's all pictures from all the all the doctors up to I think maybe David Tennant I think I'm not entirely sure up to the 11th or 12th doctor I think um, but the one I coloured was from uh, there we go, Matt Smith that's the one that I coloured in this book um, that one was already started and I finished it off by uh, painting over it adding like a red lighting because his jacket was coloured in like a kind of a fuchsia pink colour so I dulled that down a little bit I did the dramatic lighting to kind of compensate for the for the pinky colours and drew in the porthole that wasn't there originally there was all these um Pipe works were all over the background, so I just looked up a publicity shot for that episode and um, drew it in. There was like a portal with a crack in it and uh, with the emergency lighting going on inside. So that's what I did for that one. 
Um, there is a whip in here that I'm kind of a bit embarrassed to be showing as well. It was a mad moment I had a while back. I'm not entirely sure if I'll ever go back and finish it, which is why it wasn't in the whips video. But it is this one. Because the way this lot was standing, they really reminded me of Harry Potter with Hermione, Ron, Harry and Luna. So that was how I would try to colour them. And um, Stonehenge down there, I was planning on making into a kind of a silhouette of um, Hogwarts, maybe in the background there. And then colouring them as the Harry Potter characters. I've just blacked out the background and added um, gold. I'm not sure if that circle was there or not already, but this is gold paint pen and black acrylic which I might give another coat to. So yeah, <laughs> that was my mad moment uh, trying to turn that into Harry Potter. So comment below if you'd like to see me try and finish that. I don't know. Um, it's not looking as bad as I remembered it. Uh, I think I've added, added the, um, the shirt and tie there. I did the glasses. Uh, I'm going to turn that into a wand. And the spectre specs to <laughs> to old Luna there. So yeah. I think that will work quite well. I thought he just looked like Ron in his dress robes. And that's what I thought it would look like, so we'll see. This is all um a lot of pencil. And I'm planning on using using a bit of gouache paint so I can cover over those lines a little bit. Um, and uh, Dobby. I wanted to draw Dobby on another piece of paper and cut him out and put him there where the Dalek is. I've covered over the um, that bit of the Dalek there with the gold and yeah I'd like to put Dobby there. So yeah comment if you'd like to see me finish that one. I don't know what kind of a job I'd make of it but yeah. Um, there we go. I mean frame. There we go. This one's super cool. I love carving mushrooms. So there we go, that's Doctor Who Travels in Time, that one. Next we have, this is just BBC Doctor Who colouring book. I think the artists are about the same. Again, I've covered up the uh, the name. James Newton Gray, Lee Cheng Chu and Jan Smith, yep. Same artists. And again, pictures from the... And the doctors, some are already started. I'm going to have to go back into if I if I get around to doing those. The one I actually did in this one was already started. I might, when I get to it, pop up a picture of what it first looked like. It's another one already started. This one I tried diluting the because this is this has already been done with water-based marker, and I tried diluting it. Um, it just wasn't working with the water. It just went straight through the page. So yeah, that's not an option in this book. That's another one already started, but not too bad. That one could be quite easy done. There we go. This is the one I ended up colouring. I'll pop a picture up here, how it looked like when I first bought the book. Coloured again with water-based markers, I think. There we go. That's how it looked like. I just went in. I did dilute the green on this guy and at the time I wasn't sure what colours these guys were actually supposed to be so I, yeah that's what happens when you dilute with water in this book it just goes right through but I worked on top of it with pencil I did some marker and then shaded with pencil and this bit here is collage collage stuck on the back this is actually from an old Doctor Who annual that my son was going to be throwing out when he had a clear out so I grabbed a few of the front and end pages with nice patterns on and kept those and it yeah worked quite well in there with these kind of um, computery looking lines on it I thought it fitted quite well so yeah that's the one I did in here again that's been started but not very much and that's Doctor Who colouring book next is another one I haven't really started this is another one I bought when I had I was gifted a Amazon gift card I bought a few books and I bought a few Black Widow pencils I only had the Scorpion set so I bought I think the actual Black Widow and I bought the Monarchs so I haven't actually tested those yet but this yeah this is another one of the books that I bought is Kanoko Gusa after looking through a few flip throughs I settled on my favorite <laughs> Um, I already have the latest one, um, 
a treasure of cute animals or something like that. Yeah, the latest one is a lot smaller. I have the Japanese edition. It's maybe that, that much, that much square. So I already have this one, but this one I bought because I liked. Yeah, these are my favourite images. <laughs> Looking at the flip throughs on YouTube. I'm not sure the paper is as good as the Japanese one. It's one of those I'm going to have to test on too. But yeah, as usual, Kanoko have used so really gorgeous images. That one's so cute. My nan used to have a budgie who was called Joey. Random fact for you all there. Um, okay, Kanoko Kusa, Garden of Fairy Tale Animals. Next we have some that I got from Book Depository before it closed. Um, this one I think is called Girls with Flowers. I'm not sure of the artist. I don't read um, Japanese, I think these are, or Korean. I don't read it. Uh, yeah, if the artist is there. <laughs> yeah, but it's called Girls with Flowers. And these pictures are absolutely gorgeous. Again, I saw it as a flip through on another channel and I thought, yeah. I thought, yeah, I've got to have that book. With most Korean books or Japanese books, you get a picture on that side that you can use as colour inspiration or try and copy it if you want to. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think I might in this one to try and learn a few more colour combinations that I wouldn't normally use. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm trying to stick with using watercolours in this book. I might, I might not. But yeah, I, just, I like how the watercolour kind of effect goes in this book. And the one I've coloured is one that I've yeah, painted on videos. There is a series of kind of colour along. Two videos, I think it is, where I painted that one with watercolours. Um, just the WH Smith set of watercolours and a little bit of metallic um, that I got from b and and yeah, I did go a little bit too heavy with my water here. So it's learning how to control your water and not put too much on. That's the problem in these books. But yeah, um, I'm quite happy with how she turned out. Colours are slightly... And my lamp is showing a little bit of blur there. Let me just turn that off. It's a bit hard to tell. It's a bit hard to tell whether to have the lamp on or off in this kind of overcast weather. But yeah, there was a bit of blur there. That's a lot better. Okay, the colours are a little bit different. I went more kind of um, auburn with her hair, and that one's more kind of a golden blonde, but yeah, I'm quite happy with how the colour palette works on that. And that was super fun. I do love using my watercolours. That's Girls with Flowers. Um, here we go, I got this one as well from Book Depository. This one is called something like Guardian Fairies of the Mystery Garden or something along those lines. Um, but again you have I'm not sure of the artist again I'm sorry I don't read the read the Korean but again you have the colour the colour plate here that you can copy if you want to and the line art on the other side most of these are fairly fine and detailed um, so yeah it's kind of intimidating to me a little bit I should follow my own advice and just jump in and colour one I love this one um, I should just jump in and colour one and then not be so intimidated for the next time. But yeah, gorgeous pictures in this one. And I had to grab it before Book Depository closed down. And there's a, a lot of kind of art um, pieces in the front as well. So yeah, it's, it's lovely just as an art book really. Look at, look at that satin. Beautiful. But yeah, there we go. Guardian Fairies. Oh, Guardian Fairies of the Wonder Garden. That's what that's what it was called. I should write that down before I forget again. Um, next we have a Momo Girl. This is Momo Girl, Girls with Music. Um, I'll grab this one because I, the Girls with Poem, I have the Colouring Heaven, the Momo Girl Colouring Heaven with the Girls with Poems. So I went for this one, Girls with Music. And this is really nice, I think. These are a couple of the double page spreads. Um, and they've been kind of shrunk down and put into the back. See, yeah, see, that one there. That one there is the one that I've actually coloured. You can see. Yeah, let me move my tracing paper. That's the one I've actually coloured. There we go, mainly pencils. 
it is a double-sided book unfortunately so yeah um don't use a markers unless you're prepared to sacrifice the other side um markers and watercolor metallic watercolor there yeah and that one is shrunk down and and just a one page in the back which i think is really nice if you're not if you're a bit too scared to do the or to do the full double page spread you can do the little one but again yeah gorgeous pictures we all know oh my god these ones are a little bit odd i will say these kind of space disco i think these are a little bit odd but and that one i don't think i'll color but all the others yeah absolutely beautiful very detailed a lot of them but yeah beautiful let me show you my favorite Find it there. I adore that picture. That is beautiful. Yeah, I might have done one now, so I shouldn't be so intimidated. Just colour your favourite ones. <laughs> have fun with it. But that is the one that I coloured in that one. I'll just add tracing paper back. That is Momo Girl Girls with Music. Next, we have a few that have only just come out this year. So I've grabbed those. This is Kirby Roseanne's or Rosanna's. Alien Worlds, and this one is kind of divided opinion, I think, in the, in the Kirby fandom. Um, there's a lot of people thinking it's it's a bit too weird, but a lot of people do love it. I I like the idea that you can just go completely crazy with it and uh, use any any colours you can think of. There's absolutely no wrong way to colour an alien because nobody's ever seen one. Can be any color that's beautiful and Kirby's kind of usual detailed sort of backgrounds with the rocks and plants and stuff they are gorgeous and the one I colored in here is this one and there we go that's the one that I colored with markers I used markers because I, I wasn't too bothered about losing that picture on the back these kind of space scenes where there's a little shuttlecraft and the space planets and stuff that i probably won't ever color those so i'm not going to be too bothered about using markers and i can always buy another copy of the book if i do finally decide to but that's lovely as well but yeah as i said any colors just go for it that one i tried to stay with the natural kind of greens and browns but I ended up um, throwing in this orange because I was stuck for a colour to use as an accent colour. So I just picked a colour with my eyes closed and ended up with um, apricot, I think it was called. So yeah, that's uh, the one I've coloured in here. That is Alien Worlds, Kirby Roseanne's or Rosanna's. This one again was only just released this year, I think. This is a Vox Machina Critical Role colouring book. And there's a few artists uh, cited. There we go, there's the artist there. And um, I got this one after watching a flip through online on YouTube, and I absolutely loved it. I did watch the cartoon series on um, the animation on Netflix. Um, I know they actually do the, the game um, as a series of podcasts, the actual campaign, but I haven't listened to those. But that picture is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to colour that one. A lot of various art styles for the different um, characters from the party. And the one I coloured was this one, which was done with watercolour, mainly colouring pretty much the whole page and working on top with pencils. Um, I think I used marker, yeah, marker for his skin and hair, and the rest of it is watercolour with pencil shading. And uh, yeah, I'm still going through this phase of doing white outlines. <laughs> I'm loving doing the white outlines at the moment. I'll probably get bored of it in a while and move on to something else. But at the moment, I'm loving doing the white outlines. So yeah, I outlined all that. And that's the one I've coloured from there. Vox Machina, Critical Role colouring book. So we have a few little ones. This is one that I snagged on uh, Amazon for a good price. It's Gothic Minis. I need to zoom in for this one. This is Selena Fennec. Um, I do have a couple of these... Um, these colouring books these are taken from 
for the first half of the book I didn't already have the pages and it's always nice to have pages in a smaller size as well so if you don't have the time you can just get something done really quickly and it should look really good when it's done these at the front are the ones I don't already have and the paper in this one is pretty good that's one I coloured with a just like one brown pencil I think it was a Tesco Go Create pencil that was just lying around while I was watching TV at one point and I thought oh yeah I'll just start colouring and there we go I think it just it kind of looks like a sepia sort of photograph which I thought was quite nice so yeah that was a bit of a challenge to colour with just one pencil but fun that is Gothic Minis by Selena Fennec it's that one yeah that one's in Britain and the paper's fine oh it does make you wonder Right, the next few are a job lot of Hannah Lynn books that I bought because Hannah Lynn actually sent her newsletter out and said Amazon are about to be putting their prices up so I'm having a sale on all my books so I went on and bought a load of Hannah Lynn books. <laughs> it's a good job it was payday around the same time so yeah um, that was a warehouse. I'm some warehouse one. This is Fantasy Faces, Line Art and Grayscale and I haven't started this one yet but I do like that you get a line art version and a grayscale of the same image. Um, I'm not such a huge fan of having two images exactly the same, um, which you'll notice all the books, most of the books that I've bought don't have that. And um, again, I might be in the minority, but I don't really like what she started to do now with having um, one version that's detailed and then another version that's simplified. I'm not a huge fan of that either. Um, but why not a grayscale? Yeah, I can go for that. I haven't coloured in that one yet. Enchanted Faces. I did try the paper on this one because this one is uh, printed in America, in the USA. So I tried the paper and just started colouring that one in the back. That is with Castle Art Gold pencils, I think, for the butterflies. A little bit of white gel pen for the white dots. And then just a marker base on the rest of it that I need to go back in and finish. But that was just a test of the paper. And yep, that works really well. And this one has 50 different, 50 different pages. So yeah, I was made up with that. If I... You know, sometimes I do like to colour it another page again, but if I feel like I I will ever want to, if I'll ever fancy doing that, I usually tend to scan them into the computer, print them out. This is another one, sweet and simple. Whimsy Girls, again, Amazon Warehouse. Where was this one printed? Oh, Germany. I'd have to test this paper as well. Again, there's like 50 different, different images in that one. Nice little pocket size one. Get an image finished in maybe an evening if you put your mind to it. So yeah, super fun for a little quick, little quick colouring. Let me just get those out of the way. This is another one I did buy a lot. <laughs> this is uh, 50 Magical Pages. Again, Amazon Warehouse. I do love my bargains. And again, 50 different pages. Oh, that is cute. Oh, it's lethal flipping through all these books. I see so many pictures that I want to colour in. But there's only so much time. Um, yeah, 50 different kind of island girls, mermaids, all that kind of stuff in that one. Um, Maui mermaids and island whimsy girls. This one does have two lots of each of the pictures, but I'm a big fan of fantasy and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Unicorns, dragons, that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, so I grabbed this one. This one does have um, two sets of each one. But I think that's the only one I bought that had two sets of each one. But yeah, just to give you a quick idea. I'm sure we all know Hannah Lynn. We've got some vague idea of what's in her books. Yep, that one is Mythical Maidens and Curious Creatures. And I got this one. I really want to try experimenting more with grayscale. Uh, I have coloured a couple of grayscale pictures and I really did enjoy them. So I wanted to try this one. And with this one you get um, yeah, you get a dark grayscale and you get a light grayscale. So I want to have a go of both different kinds and see see how they both compare. But yeah, this one with the two different styles of grayscale, yeah, I can handle that being both the same. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that's one that I'd like to get into. So many I'd like to get into. Next one, Tattoo Darlings. <laughs> this is 40 different pages in this one. And up to this point, I only had the one um, Halloween Hannah Lynn book. But because she said she was having this sale and they were like £4.30 or something on Amazon, I thought, yeah, I'd get a few of them. Um, and last but not least of Hannah Lynn, this is Mermaids, Fairies and Other Girls of Whimsy. Again, 50 different pages. A lot of these are in the fairy tale Hannah Lynn books. So... Oh, that one is in the... Um... In the magical creatures, all the grey scale, and that one I've already coloured in the colouring heaven, um, Hanolin fairy tale book. So there we go. Next is one that I got from AliExpress uh, not too long ago. This is very new to me, and it did come slightly damaged in the post. Mm. The uh, corners are all dinged up there, but the pages are not really affected. So, yeah, this one is Muses. I think it's also called uh, Mystica. They're, they're both exactly the same books. They've just got different titles. Um, this one I've seen on a few flip throughs online as well. Um, yeah, gorgeous pages in this one. But some of the images are kind of repeated, which annoyed me a little bit because, see, that picture. Did I not just see her down here some? See, that picture is the same as that picture. <laughs> so that kind of irritates me a tiny bit, but that one is double-sided compared to the other one, I suppose. But yeah, the pictures are gorgeous, and there's enough different images to, to actually warrant buying the book, I think. I haven't coloured in this one yet because it did arrive, it only arrived like um, a couple of weeks ago. And again, in the beginning, you do get a lot of um, already coloured versions. So you can use those as inspiration if you want to. There we go. That is Muses. I'm not sure of the artist, I'm afraid. Um, no, it doesn't say in English. Oh, Dada Chio. Is that it? Dada Chio. Oh yeah, I didn't know the artist was there. Awesome. This next one is another one that's fairly new to me. Um, there was I did pre-order this one on Amazon, but the date ended up getting pushed back, and in the end I got a bit bored with waiting, so I cancelled it and bought it off eBay, so so I could have it a lot sooner. This is Wildflower Folk by Christine Karen that I've been I was waiting for um, ages for it to be actually be published, and uh, finally got my little hands on it. And uh, yeah, these, I'm sure we're all familiar with Christine Karen's uh, kind of gorgeous images. There we go. And this is the one that I've coloured just in last month's um, covering pages video. Uh, she's got uh, a little bit of a marker base on a few bits there. And uh, pencil shading with a little bit of white gel pen. That's the one I've coloured in. I'm really really pleased with how she's turned out actually a lot better than I thought she would it's another one of those books that I was really scared to be doing any colouring into but yeah I decided yeah I'd make her my strawberry picture I just went for it and yeah it does help um like the rest of the pictures are not going to seem as as intimidating now <laughs> just a quick flip through of some of the rest of them all oh, beautiful and there's one with a, a girl with a mug of coffee in the front or, or chocolate or something that I really want to colour. I relate. There she is. <laughs> I relate. But yeah, and that one's gorgeous too. I love dragons. So that is Wildflower Folk Colouring Book by Christine Karen. And this one. <laughs> Ah, here we go, Masters of the Universe. I bought this the other day. Um, I saw it again on Amazon Warehouse. Um, it was a really good price because of this kind of rip on the cover. It was only like three pounds or something. And I thought, why not? Because my theme for the month is men and He-Man is a man. And plus for the nostalgia value, because yeah, I remember watching He-Man as I grew up. Um, this is based more on the Netflix series, but there is a lot of characters that 
that I do recognise. Of course, yeah, and Sorceress, there's He-Man and Skeletor and Evil Lynn, <laughs> Battle Cat and Gringer, Orko, I love Orko. This is my favourite one, picture in the book. Yeah, that's just a fun little one that I grabbed because it was a really good price. Um, is there an artist? No. Oh, Diego Weisberg, there we go. So that's all the same artist in that one. And that's uh, Masters of the Universe colouring book. And the last one is one that I actually bought yesterday <laughs> when I went out for a wander around town and I popped into the charity shop. I got this one, Harry Potter colouring book, for um, £2. So as I've said, you can't leave it in the shop for that kind of little price. So um, I grabbed this one and it has yellowed quite a bit. I don't know if you can see on the camera. The paper has uh, yellowed quite a bit, so I think it's been uh, stuck on somebody's shelf for quite a while. This one, but there's a yeah. These pictures of the um, the characters I really like. The wallpaper pages not so much, but for two pounds, hey, you can use your markers. Uh, have a bit of fun with it. There is a picture of Dumbledore near the front, and I managed to get some watercolors as well from the same charity shop. I'll show you those. Um, I've got some watercolours as well from the same charity shop. These little Windsor & Newton watercolours for £4. And I think they're they're about 16 There we go. They're a little beat up. Um, and when I got them they had a piece of tracing paper over the top that had stuck to them. So I had to take the wall pads out and wet them down and get the tracing paper off and clean them up a little bit. But I haven't actually had a play with those yet, which will be interesting because I'm used to using watercolours from a tube onto a palette. So I'm not exactly sure how I can cope with watercolours um, actually in the pans. But I wanted to play with those in this book, seeing as they're both from the same shop. And um, as I'm colouring men, well... Technically hot guys I'm supposed to be colouring, but Dumbledore is a man. <laughs> and I will count him as a man, even if he's uh, not what is generally considered hot. I'm going to count him as a man. And I want to try and colour one of these pictures here. If I can find it. Yeah. I want to try and colour that one with the watercolours. So I might try and film that one and see how that turns out. This... this um, frame I will probably collage some pattern paper into there for that frame because I don't think I'm going to be colouring or painting that anytime soon. Um, I thought maybe I could just do it all in one colour and then go over these lines with maybe a gel pen or something but that would take so dang long. But I will at least colour this middle part with the watercolours and I might film that to, um, to see how I get along with those. Oh my goodness that is super detailed but cool. <laughs> And the first picture as well, I like that one. But look at all those leaves, man. I don't know if I can bring myself to do that. It would look super nice when it's done though. But yeah, anyway, that is the Harry Potter colouring book. And that is the last book that I have bought this year because I just bought this one yesterday. Although technically the Gnomes colouring heaven book did just pop through the letterbox. So that might be the last one technically. But yeah, this is the last one I actually went out and bought. Hope you've enjoyed catching up with me and all the books I've bought since I did my colouring book collection videos. Um, I may kind of do another one of these in another six months or so. Or I might reprise the whole colouring book collection um, around about Christmas time like I did last year. I haven't quite decided yet because I did take quite a long time to, to film and getting the books out and putting them away. Yeah, that was a heck of a job. <laughs> but I'll see how I'm feeling towards the end of the year. And for now, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!